Good morning. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Elle. I'm the Keystone Stitcher and today is April 15th. Oh, tax day in the U.S. I think. Uh, 2024. So, how have you been? It's been a crazy couple weeks here. We had we had the solar eclipse. We were in the path, well, we were kind of in the path of totality. We were at 97 point some percent total. Leading up to, so the entire week prior to April 8th when the eclipse happened, and the day after, so the 9th, we had nothing but rain or snow that whole time. And then on the morning of April 8th, I woke up to cloud cover. I mean, there was no break in the clouds anywhere. And finally, around 1.30, because our eclipse was going to start around 2, the clouds kind of parted, the sun came out, and we had a beautiful day. So I was going to get pictures for you, but I think you can find them online. So other than that, there hasn't, it, it's been kind of crazy. Like I said, the weather's been ridiculous. So I've been indoors quite a bit, got a lot of stitching done. And that means that I have six projects to show you. And believe it or not, three of those are new starts. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the first one. The first one is life support. Wait, oh, wait, before I do that, let me talk about the picture behind me. This is multicolored sampler. It's by a company uh, called Happy Mood Point on Etsy. I'll link them down below. I stitched this on a 16 count ice by To Die For Fabrics. And the design had eight colors in it. I reduced it to six, changed I think two of them just to go with my fabric better and because I wanted more jewel tones. Okay, so that's what's behind me. So my new start was life support. And that is what this will look like here. This was a special request uh, that I made with Megan Stitching Moon on Etsy. She's Stitching Moon Designs. This is by the artist Giuseppe Maccone, who she charts several of his pieces. I think she now has six of his pieces uh, in her shop. And in my last video, I showed a few of them. And I might have shown them all. I think I showed them all. Um, I did. I showed them all. So this is the one I wanted. She charted it for me and I got started. So I have just over 2,000 stitches in there um, for 2.26%. I mentioned last time that I thought about stitching this on black, but I, I struggled with black and I decided not to. And I'm glad I didn't because, let me put a picture in here. This is all of the black that is in this page except for this block right here. So this block here, my hoop was in the way. Um, and I counted, there are 23 black stitches there. But other than that, what you see there is all the black. Now, when I get over here, this final page over here is a lot of black. But let me show you the depth of color that is in this one. Isn't that gorgeous? And so you can see I'm already getting into the skin on the hand and the arm. And this will be a leaf that that comes over the hand. And this is stitched on a 20 count Aquarius by Color and Cotton. This is just a Nata. Um, I love this fabric. I wish I could get more of it. It's really hard to find. Uh, they now have a um, brick and mortar shop. And so it's hard to find their fabrics on the website. And uh, one, two, three stitch supposedly carries them but they every time I see it it's always upcoming upcoming so one more time that is life support and I can't wait to get back to this and put some more time into it okay so the next project I worked on I'm kind of going in order this this video by when I picked them up instead of some preordained order so actually this is preordained isn't it okay anyway the order I'm going in is the order in which I worked on them. And so the next one I pulled out was Beetle Pop. And this is what Beetle Pop looks like. I was working on that hand when you last saw it. I had had her done. And here is a picture of the hand after I finished 3865. So all of that, except for the outline, is all 3865. And unlike her, where I could jump back and forth between skin tone and hair or skin tone and lips or whatever. There was nothing to jump around on. It was just skin. 
Now, once I got into the shaded parts and started seeing the details between the fingers, and it got a little more interesting, but yeah, that was quite boring. So did I finish Beetle Pop? You bet I did. And here it is. Look, I'm so happy with her, him, it, whatever. Um, like I said, that hand was something. Beetlejuice, let me put a couple pictures in here. So here's where I had done, there was a lot of confetti. So there was 50 some colors that had less than 20 stitches. So one to 19. And once I got all of those in, this is what he looked like. Once I put in another dozen colors and finished them out, this is what he looked like. If I started with him, I would have been really nervous that this was not going to come out. This is heavy. Um, but yeah, he came out. Now, he is one that the closer you get, kind of the creepier he looks. But um, yeah, he's, he's great. So now I did make one mistake in this, and that was I ordered the frame before I had all the stitching done. So I, what I did is I took the stitch count, divided it by 18 because this is an 18 count Ada, and then got my measurement. And because of, you know, you can see the bottom there and the top, because probably my tension, it didn't work out to be exactly that size. Normally I wait until I have, let me see if I can pop this better. This is heavy, <laughs> this is all glass. I wait until I have three corners done. So the entire, I do an entire row across and then I do an entire uh, column down so that I can get the exact measurement before I purchase a, a frame. This time I didn't. But you know what? This pops so much on that fabric that, yeah, you don't even really notice it until you get up close and, and then you go, oh, wow, there's some fabric there. So this is an 18 count Ada I dyed myself. I am thrilled to have her done. And she's so heavy. Let me put her down and I will be back and talk about this some more. Okay. So I put her behind me. I was asked to leave this up for a couple videos at least to be able to see this. So that's where she's going to stay for a little while before she gets hung. And as you can see, if you're looking at that, your eye is so drawn to what is going on that you have to look up or down to see that, that I did not get that stretched enough to be able to fill the frame. So a little bit about Beetle Pop. Beetle Pop is by Lux Nova Studios. It, the chart is available from Unconventional X Stitch. The chart was great. I love stitching on her. Um, like I said, the hand was a little, you know, tedious in there. It, it got a little boring. Once I started getting into some of the shading around the fingers and around the edge of her hand, and it was changing colors more, it was more interesting. Beetle Pop was just fun, or Beetle Juice. He was just a blast to do. There were a few stages, for example, here, where I looked at it and went, oh man, is this gonna, and I'm thinking, if this does not work, if Beetle Pop does not come out, Beetle Juice does not come out, I'm gonna be so disappointed after stitching everything else. And I put a few more stitches in, and I got to here, another dozen colors, and there was a lot of confetti in him. Um, but after doing that hand, the confetti was so much fun. But I'm glad I stuck with it. I, I, I'm just so enjoying this. Now, the fabric, the fabric is an 18 count Ada that I, from Design Works. I don't, I've never bought that before, but it was a package. It was on sale on one, two, three stitch. I would not buy that again. So there were plenty of broken threads throughout, which meant I had to adjust my tension or the stitches would be smaller. If you're not familiar with Ada, Ada is four threads, by four threads and they're woven together. So one or two of those threads were broken, adjusting and changing the, the width of the, uh, the fabric that you were stitching on. There were areas where the threads were broken and I wasn't stitching over them. I had to try to trim them or I had to try to force it back through the back so that 
the thread was on the back where it was sticking out instead of sticking on the front. There's also, and you really can't see it here, but right here, there's two lines, two threads that are thicker than the four strands. And I think there's almost six strands. I think one has five and one has six. So the, my fingers, the vertical thread is much thicker than the horizontal threads. And it's two, right, kind of next to each other. There's two stitches in between them. So there's a line, if you get up close, you can see there's these thicker lines going down. So would I buy DesignWorks fabric again? No, I would not. I, it, the cost was not that much of a savings for me to be frustrated by the fabric. Now, I do purchase a fabric called Kato on Amazon, which is much cheaper than the Zweigart. And that one I like. I haven't had any problems with that one. But design works? No, I wouldn't buy that again. Okay, anything else I want to tell you about this? Um, is that it? Oh, the fabric that I dyed. I dyed that using Rit Dye. I used liquid, and I used a combination of lemon, Rit, yellow, I think it was called lemon yellow, and neon yellow. So I used, to get the intensity, I used about half a bottle of the lemon and about a quarter of the, of the bottle of of uh, the neon. So that's how I got that color of yellow. And I think that might be about it, right? Um, yeah, so um, now as far as that being my style, I'm not typically into the modern, real modern look like that. But Beetlejuice is something that just kind of, it's a family favorite movie. Uh, it, the original movie came out in 1988. My children were one and four. So we didn't see it right away, but when they were old enough to start watching movies and to rent movies, and they wanted, you know, little kids wanted something scary, this was something I could say was scary, but not. And there was nothing in it they couldn't watch. So this became a family favorite. And it kind of stuck with us. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Brings back a lot of good memories of movie nights with my children. So that's Beetle Pop. You won't probably see me stitching anything else quite that modern and vibrant in your face, but you know, you never know. Okay, so when I finished that, I decided let's see how close I can come to a finish on something else. So I pulled out the old sled, which will look like this. This is a design from the just Cross Stitch Magazine, December 2023 issue. Now this was not the Christmas, this was the, the December issue or winter issue. I don't remember what they called it. And I am stitching this on a piece of 18 count. The artwork is by Elizabeth Spurlock. And well, yeah, I'll do this. And here's where it is. Here's where it was when you last saw it. So you see, I finished the entire bottom, including all the back stitch around that sled. And then I got, this is the very top of the page. Now the top of the page is an irregular, it's of the snow sitting on the wall there. So it, I'll bring it in so you can see that. And I love those, those slats on this sled. It's just, they're beautiful. I kept holding this back when I was working on the bottom and go, wow, you know, I'd hold it back and look at it and go, because when you're looking at it up close, you don't really see the full effect. And, uh, yeah, so I had a lot of fun, but I got to this, started filling this in, and I spent a couple days on this and went, okay, it's time for a change. I'm, I'm ready to move on. And at that point, I wasn't sure. I was thinking, there was a project that I was thinking about that I hadn't worked on in a while, but I thought, you know, I requested a chart from Unconventional Cross Stitch, and Every, about every week, now she had told me Jody runs unconventional cross stitch, and she had said she had it in. I requested and asked her if she could chart this. Now she charts other artwork by this artist. The main one that most people know from my my channel is Nerthus, and this is Nerthus. Uh, I've got Nerthus. That is Nerthus framed on my wall. It's kind of hard to get a good picture. Uh, sometimes I get reflection from the, the light from across the room. This is one of my all-time favorites. Of all the pieces I've stitched, 
um, that probably is my favorite. And it's kind of divisive around here. It's, you know, my grandchildren love it. The girls who are very artistic, they love it. My oldest granddaughter keeps telling me, if you don't want that, it's mine. <laughs> so she will inherit that one day. But she is so in love with Nerthus that she asked me to take a picture of it on my wall and send it to her so she could have it. And I thought, you know what? I know Megan, Megan the artist, Megan Majeski, has a wet, an, uh, not a, a Wetsy. I was trying to say website and Etsy all at the same time. Has an Etsy shop where she sells canvases and, and, and small prints, but she also sells stickers. And she had a pack of nine stickers. And in that pack of nine stickers, she had Nerthus. And so I thought, at least let my granddaughter have a sticker of Nerthus. So I bought this pack. And in this pack was this design that I'm about to show you. And I fell in love with it. And I immediately texted Jody and, and asked her, well, I didn't text her, I, I direct messaged her through Instagram. And I asked her if she could get that and chart it because it's not in Megan's pages of work that she's charted. And she has uh, two different pages of, of artwork by Megan. And she got back to me and said, okay, I have it. It's, I think she called her bin, her bin of things to chart. So I didn't know how long it would take. And so I would look back oh, about once a week, just see if it was in her website, on her site. And this night, as I finished the old sled and I was thinking about picking something else up, I decided, oh, let's check out on conventional X stitch, see if it's there. And it was, and I was so excited. I hit put to cart, you know, send to cart, buy now. I didn't even go to my email. There's a little link that says download, download files, download something like that. And I immediately clicked it, downloaded it while, and then I put it in Pattern Keeper while it was going in Pattern Keeper. I grabbed the piece of fabric that I had saved, waiting for this design, and I started it. <laughs> so this is Death in the Garden. The artwork is by Megan Majeski. Um, yeah, this is another one now that my oldest granddaughter is going to inform me that she wants if I ever don't want it. I know exactly where I want this to hang in my house. Um, and I got started on the first page. So there's the first page. Let's see if we can get those colors. These are all blues and grays. Right here, there's four stitches that just, so there's two, three across the top, and then three, if you count that way, making that four stitches. That is the first page. So this right here is the end of page, and there's the end of the page. So I put in almost the same number of stitches, just over 2,000 that I put into uh, life support, but this one brought me to 1.51%. But they both have just over 2,000 stitches. And this design measures 450 by 330. So it will come in at just over 148,000 stitches. And you can't get the, I have to bring this in close for you to get all the shading. And there we go again. So I'll put up, you can see what it will look like. This is the top right corner. And normally I start top left, but I just decided to be different and start over there. And those colors are just gorgeous. So that's my one of my new starts. That's the one you knew nothing about. Once I did that, it was time to work on a focus piece. And my focus piece was my Weaver's Tapestry. And yeah, I'm not even gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. This is what I had left to do because it is such a long banner that the image just, you can't really see all the details if I show you the whole thing. So here's where it is. So I had finished this little strip of border here, but I need to do this band. So this band and everything above it are brand new. And you can see that there. And let's see if I can, nope. Okay, so here's the bottom. And work our way up with, if I bring that in a little closer. I love this with the salt lick. Uh, it just, and the griffins. And are these deer? The antlers are very weird. 
Um, and now, so far these right now, working on them, they remind me of donkeys. But I haven't really looked too closely to see what they are supposed to be. So I put this on the board this way because right in this area here is the very top of the design. So this here, so this band right here and everything above it, I completed in three days. So I have to finish this band here. So if I put the picture up here, you can see I've got this band to finish. Then I have a small band and then I have one more large band. And I think I should be able to finish that before, um, before the end of the month. That would be amazing to have something else off my, my, my board. So that's Weaver's Tapestry. And then this morning I had a new start. So my new start was one that I was, oh wait, before I do that, um, Weaver's Tapestry. This is on 18th count Scapellos. Uh, it is, I think it's Scapellos. Yes. And it is by the sewing shop. The fabric is just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Oh, and can you see that band there? So I, when I use scroll rods, I use Velcro. And I purchased my Velcro through embroidery.com. And I'll put a picture in here. You buy two pieces. You buy one strip, which says, if you can see that, yeah, I'm not gonna try to point. You can see that there's a, where it tells you, it was a dark block and it will say for fabric or for rod and you buy the one piece and you attach it to your rod and it's it's super self -fatigue. There's no way, once you put on the rod, it is never coming off. And then you put the other piece, which says for fabric, on your fabric and you they stay really well. Now I can force it off. I usually just, when I use the Velcro, I just plan on cutting that off when I'm done and I'm finishing the fabric. But it makes it really easy. I can just rip the Velcro, take it off, and put another project on my scroll rods. Okay, so my next new start. This I started this morning with Carrie. She's the patient stitcher here on Fostu. This is called Eyes of the Forest, and it will look like this. Eyes of the Forest, you can purchase this design as a PDF from mybobbin.com. It's not expensive, it was under $10. And I'm stitching mine on this purple fabric this is going to be fun. So you can see I've just started. I don't have very many stitches in there yet. So I have, what do I have here? I have 315 stitches in here, which brings me to exactly 0.50 or half a percent. And I'm going to work on this for the next couple of days. And, oh, there you go. That's a little bit better. So right now I'm just working on really like colors. I think it's 644 and 3023 are the two colors that are in here. So that area here is the bridge area between the eyes. And this little area here that is not stitched is the right eye. And then right here starts the left eye. So I'm gonna kind of work my way across. Then I wanna do the one eye and then I'm going to start working up and filling in the background of the forest. And then you can see that. So the forest, there's a lot of dark colors in there. Um, because I have the bridge started there, I can always come down and work on pieces of the owl if I'm bored with the dark colors and want to break. But that is my, my new start. So this is on, did I say this is on 18 count? I just threw this in some red dye because there's so many dark colors that I didn't want to stitch on white. All right, so that's all the projects I worked on. And let's see if I forgot anything. Oh, that design, eyes, the Eyes of the Forest, that design measures 210 by 303. So it's not going to be a giant piece. It comes out to just over 60, 63,630 stitches, because I remember it was 63, 63. So that's what I worked on. That, that was a lot for me. Now I have a giveaway for you. 
This weekend, I received the most recent issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine. This is it right here. And when you have a subscription, you also have access to the digital files. So there are two designs, including this one, that I would really like to stitch out of this. The other one, if I can quickly find it, I will show you. You know what, let me go to the back and find the page, 39. And it is one that I wouldn't normally think that I would like, but it is this right here. And I'm not a real patriotic stitcher, but there's just something about that I love. I love the colors, I, I just, I love that. So those are the two that I would like to stitch out of this. But I prefer to stitch from PDF. So I'm going to, okay, so I, sorry for anybody who's overseas, but it will cost me more to ship this than it is to buy this. So I'm going to restrict this one to just in the US. And uh, if you're interested, use the word summer because this is, they're calling this the summer edition. And uh, yeah, it just says summer 2024. So they've quit doing months and now they just do seasons. So if you would like this, somehow in your comment, leave the word summer. Don't say giveaway. Uh, I have to mail this to you, so you need to be 18 so I can mail it out. Um, what else? You know, just don't track the trolls. You know, I want to make sure somebody who's going to use it will get it. Okay, so now my plans moving forward. My plans are to see if I can finish the Weaver's Tapestry. That would be really great. That would be amazing if I could have another finish. Because I currently, with Beetle Pop being done, I have two finishes so far this year, if I, but I have three new starts. So if I can finish Weaver's Tapestry, it'll kind of be a one for one finish and start. My next focus piece is going to be Stone Expression, which looks like this. This is also by the artist Giuseppe McConey and charted by um, Stitching Moon Designs, Megan. And here's where, I'm gonna pull it back so you can see. Here's where it is now. And I kind of jumped around. I was working up here and my granddaughter was here last summer and wanted me to count down and work on her face because she wanted to see how that would look. And that was the face she wanted. She didn't want the other face. She wanted me to come down. So I've kind of been bringing this down to kind of blend in and connect it. And then I've worked over here a little bit. So let me show you. One thing I really love about Megan's designs is her mock-ups, when she puts them up, look well when she puts up the image of what it should look like it is exactly what it ends up looking like so there's no worrying about you know gosh does the mock-up is it going to look like what it looks like stitched and yes her stitching looks just like the image so that is going to be my main focus piece but this piece still has eighty thousand stitches let me see if i can show you with 80,000 stitches, I'm a little concerned that I'm going to feel burned out if all I work on Monday through Friday, every week, because it will take me about three, four months. To, I, I did that. It would take me, what, 80 stitching days, because I can roughly do 1,000 stitches a day. So you can see there's a lot to, of fabric here. This is a 20 count even weave. Um, so because there's 80,000 stitches left, and that would roughly take me 80 or so stitching days, depending on if I you know, have days I can't get stitching in. You divide that by five days a week, and that's gonna take a while. So I, I haven't decided, but I'm gonna alternate that with another project that I wanna finish this year. So I had selected five of my large projects to finish this year. I finished two, so there was the Pokemon that I finished and now there's Beetle Pop. The third one is Weaver's Tapestry. The fourth is Stone Expression. And the fifth is my Four Seasons by Dome or Soda. I got it through the Soda Stitch store. It is out of print. I'm so sorry to say because it is beautiful. It is found on places like AliExpress, 
It's called Four Seasons Castle. It's being sold as a stamped kit. Um, I have not been able to find this on the secondary markets. The original, I did find there's a website that you can purchase the original. It is in another language. I, I don't remember the sites. I can't recall the name of the, of the website. But if you put in Four Seasons and you do, there's a Reddit stream and in the Reddit stream, somebody links to this and says it's the original. And it is the original. It comes as just a chart. It does not come with fabric or floss. It's not stamped, obviously. But I actually tried to purchase it because it's very inexpensive. And it says it's not available in my country. So that is the only place that I found the original. But here is where I am now. So this is my other piece that I want to finish this year. And this is roughly the halfway point right here. I still have almost 50,000 stitches. So between these two, you know, there's 130,000 stitches. Let me bring this in. This one is so fun. Now this measures 210 by 605, I believe it was, 600. So this is very long and narrow. I'm doing this on a 16 count that I lightly dyed because I wanted it to look like clouds up here. But you can see here, this is not fully stitched. And so I didn't want, you know, really vibrant blue with cloud type effect because that would show through on that building. But this is more subtle. So this is all full coverage right here, but then you have areas up at the top where you have things that of course, like this building over here, which is like a shadow of the building in the back that you can see is not full coverage, but all of this stuff is full coverage. You may also notice something different about this, and that is that I haven't gridded this. I started this in 2019 before I knew gridding was a thing. <laughs> and as you can see, gridding has kind of taken over. I grid most of my projects. This though, I, when I considered gridding it, working over in this area would have been really nice to have it gridded. That one was, was complicated because all the colors, all of these colors in here as you're changing colors are so similar that it would have been nice to have that gridded for some reference. But as you're changing colors in here, the colors are so different even up in these trees, as you're changing colors, they're so different from the colors next to them that you really can, can follow where you are quite easily. So I decided not to grid this and kind of do this old school. And it's kind of fun because I've got those projects that I obviously grid and you don't have to count. And then this one, you know, I have to count. I have to kind of count from here and from here and make sure that I'm not messing up and that's how I stitched for, you know, close to 30 years was to do, to count everything. So I, while I enjoy my gridding, it makes it quicker on my full coverage. For this one, I'm enjoying the slower pace. And, and of course, like I say, you can easily figure out where you're at because everything is so different. I mean, look at this building here. If you can look in there, you can see that the colors are very, very different from what's next to it. So even when you get into like the building here, that color is much darker than that color. And then you have the whites and so that, you know, look at that roof line, all those colors are, so I love this. It, it's, and again, I know exactly where this is going. I want to put this up behind my couch. And so because I want this behind my couch, there is nothing on that wall. <laughs> and it annoys me so much that I've got this one blank wall above my couch. So this needs to be done. So what I'm thinking of doing, let me put that down because I'm getting tired. And you can look at Beetle Pop while I do. What I'm thinking of doing is one of two things. I'm either going to do three days each week on um, Stone Expression, sorry, and then two days each week on Four Seasons. Or when I pick up and start working on 
Stone Expression. I'll pick that up, say, on a Monday. If by, you know, Wednesday evening, at the end of the third day, if I'm thinking that, yeah, I'm enjoying this, I want to keep going, then I might just alternate weeks. And so one week I'll work on Stone Expression and one week I'll work on Four Seasons. Four Seasons is one that I tried working on. There's a hashtag on Instagram. And I want to talk to you about Instagram in a moment, um, which is Oldest Whip Wednesday. And I tried doing that and I, I it kind of worked for a while. My problem with that is because it's my oldest whip, that that's what I would stitch on on that day. But it is so fun to work on this with all those color changes and watching that develop that one day I didn't want to put it down. So that needs at least two days and maybe I'll alternate weeks. So those are my plans moving forward. There's a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about now. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you about a brand new floss tuber. Uh, she's had a knitting podcast for a while. Her name is Caro. She lives in Germany. And she does a combination of things. She does some smaller things, like she'll do some witchy stitcher things. And she'll change, change. She'll make her finishes into things such as project bags. She's working on a project bag right now that me, as somebody who's not a sewist, I mean, I can do a straight line. I've got a sewing machine, but I quilting, I make it up as I go because I'm not real good about the details that have to go into quilting. And so I kind of do my own thing. I'm not a sewist. She is actually taking a fabric drawstring bag and using that as her template and that will be her lining. And then she's finishing off her cross stitch and attaching it to this already pre-existing bag. She's going to leave the drawstring in so that she can use that. She's also taken a heaven and earth design. So yes, she has smaller projects, but then she has her big projects. And she found a heaven and earth design, which is mostly like a watercolor background with one focus. It's an animal. I won't get into it. And she's decided that, that particular animal did not really speak to her or, her or her husband, but another animal did. And so she's actually taken and removed the animal out of this full coverage piece and then charted another animal that she wanted. And she goes through the whole process of what program she used to do this and how she's doing. It is amazing. It, so her name is Caro. I'll put her channel here on the screen. I'll also link her down below. And she adds something really unique to the community. So I hope you'll go check her out. The other thing I want to talk about is Instagram. And I just mentioned Instagram. You may notice I have not been posting on Instagram for a very long time. And that's because every time I do, my pictures are a mess. So here's an example of what Instagram does to my photos. It doesn't matter if I use my camera to get that picture or if I use a screenshot and, and so I'm not using my camera. It will distort my images. The only way to prevent that is to now take my image, put it in Canva, which is an editing software for images, use their Instagram template, kind of adjust the size of my image, and then once done, download it and save it to my phone and then upload it to Instagram and I'm I was done. I've kept Instagram because I enjoy, um, I enjoy seeing some of your work. Now, for uh, my phone is about to die here. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. My phone hits a certain time and it just shuts itself off and restarts another video and, and you lose a few seconds. So it's, it's like you have an incomplete sentence here, like half whatever I'm saying is gone. Okay, so I was talking about Instagram. Um, I, I love YouTube and I love talking to you and, and hearing what you think of my projects or hearing about what you're working on. But it's, YouTube is a very one way, visually, a one way communication. I can show you what I'm working on, but there's not really a way for you to show me what you're working on. So I like Instagram for that. If you, you know, watch my videos, whether you just watch them or you actually subscribe, I would love to see what you're working on. So on Instagram, tag me because Instagram will ta let me know when someone tags me. So tag me so I can see what you're working on. I'll feel that I get to know you a little bit better. But I also keep it because 
you can message me through Instagram, which is extremely convenient for a lot of people. I also get notifications if somebody messages. So if you tag me or you send me a message, I get a notification and I can respond to that. If you contact me through email, sometimes I forget to check my email. And so it may take me several days to get back to you. So it's a little more instantaneous on, um, on reaching. Now, speaking of which, when I have a giveaway, I do try to remind myself to check daily if you're messaging. Once somebody is one, um, I, I give away. I will kind of check daily to see if you reached out to me via email. I recently bought a new tablet because I, I had an iPad. I've had it for years. When Pattern Keeper came out, you can't use Pattern Keeper on iPad. So I bought a Kindle. I was told, you know, this is the cheapest tablet. If that's all you're going to use it for, it's good. But pattern, the Kindle is ridiculous and it's getting slower by the moment, by the day. So for example, if I go to, oh, Pattern Keeper doesn't take quite that long, but if I'm going to open up another, I have one other program on the Kindle called Zoto. If I'm going to open that to use that for something that doesn't work in Pattern Keeper, I literally tap on the icon then get my project and put it on my hoop or my scroll rod or whatever, and then look to see if it's open. And then I have to tap on which one I want to work from. And then sometimes I have to tap a couple more times. Sometimes I have to close the program out and reopen it. It could take five, 10 minutes before I actually have up on screen the PDF that I want to work on. So I bought a new tablet and I've now put Instagram on that tablet. We're going to see if I can take photos from that and get them to work on Instagram, then maybe I'll start posting again. But if I still have to now edit the photos in order to get them on Instagram, I'm probably never going to post again on Instagram. Um, so that that's, you know, you can follow me on Instagram. You can message me on Instagram, but you probably, if that doesn't work, then you're probably not going to see my images on uh, Instagram. So that's it. I had three starts this month, time to finish something else. And then I can get started on my new things. Now, I don't know if I will start on my new focus pieces. It depends on if I have enough time and if I get Weaver's Tapestry. But just in case, I wanted to show you those. That's it for me today. That was quite a bit. I will let you go. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the month and I will see you on May 1st. Bye.